All right. If you don't know, you should know. First thing you need to do is get this free audio book, The Hustler's Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success. Second thing you need to do is join today's webinar, 30 Days to $2,500. And check out all of the links below. Everything that I do, everything that I offer is under every video. Because I get a lot of questions like, hey, how can I buy such and such? It's under the video. And with that, let's just talk about my second week at the labor pool. It's a trip. It's a trip. Thank you for calling Conundrum Media. Please leave a message and we'll return your phone call within 24 hours. What's going on, people in the G-verse? This is uh, a different whole category of video. I sat up last night because, you know, daylight savings time is screwing with me. And I realized that there are so many accounts of what happened when I was a day laborer dealing with that stuff. And I remember the second week I was there because it was such a mind fuck. When you are in the palace, so to speak, when your life is good and you are cast from the palace, and say the palace is on the cloud, and you're cast from the clouds and you have to fall to earth, it hurts. I am sitting here remembering some of those dark moments, some of those dark thoughts, because the first week was <clears throat> good. Be sure to get my free audiobook, The Hustler's Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success. Please check out the information box below for that book and other offers. That second week, oh my God, that was a bitch. Because generally, there's a skilled labor and there's unskilled labor and a lot of the stuff I could do, but I had no certifications. So I was lumped into the just whatever category, just like, you know, we need a body to come out and perform certain duties second week you know the first week was so good i was like yes okay that's not horrible i'm not making a lot of money but it's not horrible second week was a trip i go in and it's a monday and it's hot it is blazing hot in the south sometimes it gets so hot you wake up sticky because of the humidity it was one of those days so there was no air conditioning in the waiting room and there was it was packed it was a ton of people so we're in there and then I'm there about four hours been there since 4 30 in the morning it's 8 30 going on nine o'clock just sit sit and wait this was before the ubiquitous uh, distribution of cell phones so there was no Twitter or whatever or Facebook talk about your time like or watch movies or whatever none of that you were just sitting there bored out of your mind sleep or talking to someone that you had developed a relationship with. I was still new. I was still odd. I was still that guy that looked like he didn't fucking belong there. So not too many people were talking to me. We're there, like I said, four hours just waiting. Because there's a certain time frame, once you cross certain hours, you're not going out for that day. Unless, you know, something pops up for evening shift. And I've literally stayed there 12 hours just waiting to get out so maybe i think that's why i had compassion for my latino brothers those dudes standing out in front of home depot because i know exactly how that shit feels to be waiting on money it is a lonely lonely wait just when we thought it was over this contractor comes in and he says i need 15 people all the smart folks got up we didn't wait until they picked. We picked, you know, he said, okay, I'll take him, I'll take him, I'll take him. He had to fill out some paperwork and stuff, and he had a van, he had a van. So we all shoveled up in the van and everything. It's like, okay, it's not so bad. The guy seemed nice. Next thing I know, we're going to bum fuck Egypt. It took us an hour to get to the job site. Still don't know what we're doing. He just said, we're going to do some construction work. So we are out in bumfuck Egypt. And they're building this big-ass warehouse. I was like, okay, you know, I'm looking around construction site. There's people doing stuff. And then he said these words. 
No, y'all are going on top of the roof. Roof? Top? At that point, I had a feeling that I had fucked up. So he takes us around to the building, and there's these ladders going to the top of the building. The building is four freaking stories tall. A one story doesn't look that high when you're looking down and maybe you get on top of the roof. But when you get to that second story, <clears throat> you get to that third story, you get to that fourth story, and you freaking look down. Fortunately, you know, we did, I was stationed in Schofield Barracks, and we had an aerosol school, so we were always out there. So the height thing... I wasn't like weirded out by because I looked down and I'm just like, goodness gracious, we're up high on this rickety ass extension ladder that's tied. Fortunately, it's tied to the roof. One of the ladders was not tied to the roof. <laughs> I'm going up. This other guy's going up. And uh, we're up there. And it was the 15 of us came. Two guys said, fuck it. They got halfway up that ladder and they said, no, nah. <laughs> no, nah, bro, no. Nah. I heard one, he's like, no, nah, I'm not going any further, right? So we had an attrition rate already before we even started. Get up on the roof. And then there's these guys up there and they've got these tar machines because there was this, this fabric of stuff laid across the roof. Then this tar went down and our job was to take the rocks and spread them over the tar. People didn't have boots. I had on some shoes I didn't care about because they got totally screwed up. So we're doing that, and I got slick. I was like, okay, they're putting rocks up here. There's got to be some way for the rocks to get up to the roof. So I went over there with the rock guys, and I was like, hey, you need someone to do this. So I got in the habit of getting the rocks, getting the wheelbarrow, and taking them places and dumping them because it was humid. It was hot. I mean, I must have lost 10 pounds that day because we're on top of the roof so the sun doesn't have to go that far to roast your ass. This is going on and on and on. And then the worst, another bad thing happened. Had to go to the restroom. We're on the roof. We're pouring, you know, moving rocks, tar and stuff. There's no porta potties up there. So you got to go down that rickety ass ladder across the field to the porta potty through the mud. It was like a 15, 20 minute ordeal to go relieve yourself. And people were, you know, sweating, drinking Gatorade and stuff. So I do that. Then I go back up on top of the roof. I'm up there for about like maybe two minutes. And it's like, okay, break time. So we got to go back down the rickety ass ladder. And, you know, they had some sandwiches and stuff. You know, the typical working slave sandwiches of uh, white bread, <laughs> bologna, and like um, like a oatmeal cake thing and some water. I think Gatorade water. I got down there late because the Gatorade was gone. Uh, the Cokes were gone, but there was plenty of water. So we had that. So I'm finishing up my prison sandwich. And I mean, last night, all right, we got to get back on the roof. Up there, moving rocks. And then one of the other guys got smart and he got my position to moving rocks because it wasn't that hard. Because, you know, just I was pretty strong. So you just move the well, wheelbarrow and just go where you need to go. So this motherfucker jumped and got my job. <laughs> Spreading rocks in the hot tar, tar and steam and shit's coming up. So we're doing this, right? And the guy who got us, he comes up. Good job, men. Good job, men. We need to get this done today. So y'all mind staying late? Didn't know what staying late meant. We finished that up like about 9.30 that night. So I'm thinking we had 12 hours. So we go back. Of course, the labor pool is closed. There's nobody there this particular time. For some reason, they normally would be open. No, we got back so late, even the second shift people were gone. So... The next morning, we have to go in there because they give you this ticket. And whoever, they have to sign off on the ticket, write your hours and stuff. So I go in there the next day and uh, trying to get my ticket cashed. Because understand, these, these checks they give you, you can't cash them just anywhere. You have to cash them at the Chinese store. I'll do a whole different video on that. So we get there in the morning and guess who is back? 
That's right. The tar man. He's back. And he's like, yeah, you know, I'll take uh, I'll take 10 of the guys that were here yesterday. And I'll take five more because we're going to do what we did again. And, you know, I didn't even get my check. Didn't even get my check. Didn't have enough time because it was like, okay, do I stay there, get my money, and run the risk of not going out? Or do I go back to bum fucked Egypt and go back? I'm like, but we finished that. So I'm just like, okay, fuck it. I'm going. I'm going. So I, I go with uh, Tarman. He takes us even further. This is an hour and a half this time to another site. Uh, apparently, this company was building warehouses uh, in South Georgia in the distribution system. So I already see the roof. I already see the rickety ladders. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. This cannot be real. So here we are on the roof doing the same thing, sweating our asses off. And yep, I mean, it was like Groundhog Day. Round 6.30 pops up. We need to get it done. We need to get it done. You know, you guys are working hard. Put some extra hours on your sheet. Put some extra hours on your sheet. <sighs> up there sweating my ass off. We ain't finished that time until like about 10 o'clock. So this goes on for the whole week. Understand, we leave early, we come back, can't get the check cash, have to go to the Chinese store to get the check cash. So I'm working like a Hebrew slave that built the pyramids for real with no money. So Friday comes and we go in there and I'm sitting there like, okay, because I had all my tickets because uh, some people would save all of their tickets to get one check. So I had four tickets and I had 55 hours at six bucks a piece, six bucks an hour. <laughs> it's like, it was like, yeah, I had 50, 55 hours. Oh yeah, they did have to pay you uh, overtime. So I'm sitting there like, do I get my money or do I go with Tarman again? Because every time, he, I mean, it was always far, it was always crazy. And I'm just like, you know what? You've come this far, just keep going. You know, you might get another 10 hours. It's more money and you'll just, you know, do what you need to do on the weekend. So we go out with him and uh, this time it's different. This time it's very different. He hand picks, he picks me and he picks four of the dudes. So uh, this time we don't go to bumfuck DJ. Take us to the distributions like so. You know, you guys kind of know the stuff, but we just need the warehouse straightened up. We need everything tidied up. And you know, whatever you know, we get it done, you can leave, but I'll give you 10 hours because you guys work the hardest for me. Tar man wasn't completely, you know, it wasn't an asshole or nothing, they just had a job to do, to do. So we're in there in the warehouse, we get it done, we get it clean, uh, and we're just sitting around and he's just telling us like us opportunities about the job, and it's just they had the contract, and it's like, you know, we wish you could hire us direct, but I'm telling you, that week in. I was so hurt. You ever work so hard that when you get up in the morning, your back just says, fuck you? I mean, seriously, I was messed up the whole weekend. I couldn't go anywhere. I just laid up in my room the whole weekend. I was so broke down. That was the second week. And that wasn't the worst week. So there's a lot of people out there who you know, hate their job or unemployed and looking for income. I cannot say don't go to the labor pool. You as a man and woman have to do what you have to do. But I'm letting you know, a lot of stuff that went down, later on I found out to be illegal. <laughs> I found out we weren't getting paid right. All kinds of stuff that went down. That is life as a day laborer. That is life as an unskilled person. And that's one of the reasons that I really started trying to build as many freaking skill sets as possible because when I was going through this, the economy was good for most people. And that's one of the reasons I have the mindset I have about the economy. The economy was booming, the dot-com thing was just really, and I was struggling because I didn't have the proper mindset, I didn't have the proper skill sets. See, it's not the economy, it's you. It's what you bring to the table, and a lot of people don't understand that. And to compare and contrast that time period, I started Conundrum Publishing, which is now Conundrum Media, in 2009 in a, uh, at the beginning of a recession and did very well. 
So there was a period when the country was doing well. Most people, you know, you can find a job, earn money. Then I came into a period where a lot of people were losing their jobs. People were losing their homes. They were losing value in the stock market. Their homes were going underwater. And I was able to grow a company in that time period because of skill sets and mindsets. So do not get overly concerned with the economy. Become immediately concerned with your abilities to serve the world. The more skill sets that you have that people want, the more things that you can do that are highly marketable, it's not gonna matter if it's a recession because you won't have a personal recession. I didn't have a personal recession during the recession when everyone else did. I was able to have empathy because I've been there, but I couldn't relate because I wasn't living like that. And the thing is, you understand, um, a lot of what I went through with the labor pool is now almost a structured program on how to get a bunch of skill sets fast. Because all of those freaking jobs that I did gave me skill sets that I really didn't wasn't aware of until later. Definitely, it, it was an experience. And there's all kinds of stuff that's coming. I'm just letting you know. There's some slutty stuff that's coming. There's some racist shit that's coming. There's some uh, funny shit that's coming. Because I really suppressed a lot of this shit for a long time because I really, really didn't want to think about it. I didn't really want to think about it. I didn't want to talk about it because those were some of the most fucked up years of my life. But in helping you understand that you could be in a fucked up place. You can be poor. You can be in a situation where you have no skill sets whatsoever right now. And I'm here to tell you, you can get them. You can get them. You can uh, create them. You can make them. Well, you can build yourself as a person, regardless where you are. And when I tell you, like I said, Tar Baby was a good story. You know, Tar, Tar Man, that's a good story. I have many, many that are worse. Way, way fucking worse. All right, this is Glendon. I'll see you on the good side.